All right, it's time to make some more siding on my uh, Woodmiser LX25. I've hauled in one log, and this log I had originally intended to be a replacement log for the cabin, but it turns out that I've got plenty of white oak here to be able to use for that. Since all my other siding is pine, I want to be able to make as much as I can out of pine, so I think I should be able to get six pieces out of this, and each piece would be long enough to do two pieces on the side. So that'll get me somewhere, and then I've got one more log just slightly wider than this one. Okay, there's my dog, there's Gabby. Now, in order to get these long logs in here, my road isn't wide enough that I could carry them like with a forklift or crossways in the bucket of the tractor. I got to carry them pretty much with the length of the tractor. So I needed to widen my work area here, which meant widening uh, my road a little bit by doing uh, this wall a little bit taller than what it was. I built it up probably another foot and that gave me some more width, and as you can see, tire tracks there, maybe. Um, it allowed me for a little wider swing to be able to get those long logs in place. And this is the wall now with what I have in place so far. I think I'm probably about half finished with it. We'll take a look at it from the other end, too, to see what needs to be done. There's still a lot to be done. Okay, so I'll continue that wall all the way around the curve to over here. I do want to leave enough room to get the tractor and my little Yamaha Rhino uh, between that walnut tree and the earth fill there. So I'll be narrowing that up a little bit, but there's still quite a lot of stone to be laid here. Fortunately, I've got a whole bunch of it. Here I am. I think I'm all ready to go. I got the blade adjusted. Uh, blade tension is adjusted. I filled up my lubricant bottle with water and dish soap. First thing I'm going to do is to make one pass across the entire thing, just having the blade barely touch this log, just so I can uh, uh, adjust my depth gauge from there. And then what I'll do, I want three quarters of an inch thick boards for the siding, so I will move the depth gauge then seven eighths of an inch for every cut that I make. Here we go. Right. Well, what I've done is uh, I've got a board that is about two and a half inches thick. And I'm not only short on boards, but I'm short on battens, too. And about two and a half inches thick is or wide is about what I wanted for battens. Now, what's left of that log on this side doesn't look too bad. I ended up getting four boards out of it. Um, this side doesn't look bad. But when you move to the other side, there's a big crack in it. And that crack goes pretty much all the way through it. So what I figured is I will go ahead and make battens out of this piece here. And then at the same time, I can cut the rest of these to width. Now, when you're doing something like this and resawing to width, you want your narrowest ones to be the farthest back, the widest ones out here. And the reason for that being is we are looking at random widths, so it doesn't really matter how long they are, as long as they have a relatively straight edge, an edge that's close enough that it'll be covered by the battens in the end. Well, these wider ones, of course, are going to make wider boards, so we will end up removing them first, so it just makes sense to have them to the outside. I'm using my handy-dandy lighting here that I just put in last week uh, so that I could take advantage of a little bit cooler conditions in the summer and uh, longer lighting conditions in the winter when I do this. So 
I don't know if I'll do this tonight or if I'll wait till in the morning. It's, uh, it's getting fairly late and I'm hungry. Well, that log is fairly well set in place. I just got to move it up against the stop, set the stops, or uh, set the dogs, um, go ahead and, and screw up against it to where it's in there tight and I'm ready to cut or start cutting. I'm actually not going to do this one tonight. Last night I was up until about 9.30 out here sawing and I ended up getting four boards and nine battens. And that log was 17 feet long, which is the same as what this one is. So I was able to cut the pieces in half, so I ended up getting eight usable boards, which will do about six feet of wall on the other side. This one isn't quite going to be enough to, uh, to complete that uh, east wall, which I'd really hope that it would, but uh, I guess it's not going to be enough. And then I got a boatload of uh, kindling here out of it, too, and a whole bunch of sawdust. And sawdust is something that really... In, in Berthoud, when I had this set up in Colorado, it was set up next to a boat, and I had to shovel everything out by hand. A couple of people have asked me why I'm going in this direction and not outward, which would make sense with some of the longer logs that I've got to do. Um, this is just about as long as this will handle, but I figure if I can do some sliding, you know, I might get by with an 18-footer, which I'm going to need a couple of 18-foot logs when I get to doing the cabin. Um, but I'll, I'll get creative and figure out something. I really didn't want to have to deal with sawdust over here and end up having to clean it out by hand. 
Over there, I can wait until it turns to dirt or back drag it with the bucket, and it'll be just, just fine. If I get a whole bunch of it, I'll just take it up to my mulch pile. I'm not going to start on this one tonight. I'll work on this one probably in the morning. Um, I'm hoping to get six pieces out of it. As you can see, there's a crack right down the middle. It's not as severe as the one was on the other log. I don't know. I didn't look at the other side. The other side actually feels pretty good. So what I'll probably do is flip it over. And then if there's any waste, it'll be on this face of the log. But I'm hoping to get six pieces out of it. All right. I have set up four boards to cut to width. We'll go ahead and do that here in just a minute. I think I don't want to cut any more than four at this point because I want to catch up siding and uh, see just exactly how many more I need at this length. Um, while I'm working on the higher portion, I can get two boards uh, per piece that I cut and when I get to work on the lower section I can get three so I don't want to cut too many in half and then uh, have a bunch of waste when I get to the lower part. With the lumber that I had cut it uh, got all but one piece now on this seven and a half foot high wall and it looks like I'll have five pieces on the five or four and a half foot high wall so I'll go ahead and I'll uh, get those cut to width. All right, I ended up getting seven boards out of that log. Two of them have splits that, two pieces, one from each side, have splits that go entirely through the board. So they won't be able to uh, be usable in full width. And I can either rip them for some corner trim or I can put a batten over the crack, I guess would be the other option. But I need to clean up. We're supposed to be getting some rain here in the next couple hours. I don't think I really want to get out my tools for starting siding again. That'll probably end up waiting till tomorrow, but I'll look at it in an hour or so, see what the sky looks like after I get this mess cleaned up. So I'll be back with you when I can. Okay, so cutting what I've got set up here should take care of finishing uh, the lower half on that east side. So let's go ahead and make a few more cuts, come up with some more kindling wood. I've got enough now to be able to finish the east side of the building. Fortunately, those two logs that uh, you saw me cut into lumber was enough to finish this side with the exception of half of a batten. Um, but I had some small pieces, so this batten here is two pieces. Everything else is uh, a single piece and had enough to do it, and I kind of like the looks of it. So. This side of the house now is complete. The back side is the living area, is living and barn area complete. Um, I do have one wall yet to finish on this first floor level over where the sawmill sits. The front is at 100%. Um, I'll still have the upper half of both levels to do. Now with those, with everything that's left, I'll go ahead and use white oak. Um, I have good continuity in most of the building. I don't think that after they weather you'll notice a whole lot of difference between the upper level and the lower level. Those are only about four and a half feet wide on the upper level. I do have a few tall ones yet to do on this uh, area near the sawmill. I do have a couple of uh, white oak logs that are fairly short that'll work really good for filling in these ends and they're actually fairly large in diameter Oh, maybe close to two feet even. So at that width, they're going to be too wide to um, have just one wide board uh, before a batten. So with those, I'll, I'll go ahead and probably rip it down the middle where it's going to want to crack anyway at that center pit. So that probably will be my next project, but it's not going to happen for a little while. 
Um, I'm going to have to spend some time now in Colorado doing some more medical testing and that sort of thing. So I'll be gone for a couple weeks. Um, I only have a few days left before I leave to do that. And I've got a lot of catching up to do. I want to mow everything. Um, there's a few things I can harvest from my garden, some tomatoes and cucumbers. So I'll go ahead and do that and uh, care for things around here so that uh, when I get back, well, when I get back, I'm sure I'm going to have to mow again. But I'll see you on the next episode. I appreciate you being here. Goodbye.